Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Scarborough Rouge Park. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I want to start uh, first off by congratulating our Minister of Finance for delivering on our promises to help the middle class and those who are trying to join it. Our first budget appears to have had the desired effect. The new Canada Child Benefit has helped hundreds of thousands of families improve their standard of living. I recently had coffee with someone who works in poverty reduction in the City of Toronto. She confirmed to me how the CCB has affected so many people she serves. Mr. Speaker, I do not have to go far to find families and children helped by the CCB. I routinely run into people who say that it has changed their way of life. Our office has assisted constituents who needed to file their income tax in order to qualify for the CCB. They have told us the impact it will have on their lives. The CCB is really a game changer. I want to share with you some of the stats from my riding of Scarborough Rouge Park. In, t in October 2016, the Canada Child Benefit helped 17,250 children. That's 9,930 families with an average benefit of $670, totaling six, close to $6.7 million. Let me remind my colleagues that this is approximately $670 per month tax-free. These payments were not made to millionaires, but to those who need it based upon their income. These are the types of programs that will help, our, help grow our middle class. This will allow young people to engage in things like soccer, hockey, gym, music. It will provide better housing. It will provide better internet access. It can help families in any way that they need to improve their standard of life. Building on this and other initiatives from the 2016 budget, our Minister of Finance and his team have crafted a budget in 2017 to support Canadians. I'm therefore very proud to speak and support this budget. I will focus on three aspects of the budget. First, support for caregivers. Two, innovation. And three, support for housing. Mr. Speaker, our Prime Minister, along with the Minister of Health and my friend, the member for Scarborough Centre, met with many of my constituents who are, who are the primary care caregivers for their loved ones at the Malvern Family Resource Centre last month. Malvern Family Resource Centre stands as a state-of-the-art facility that supports people of all generations through their early years program through to their seniors program. They have incredible leadership with, with their executive director, Grimella Prasad, at the helm. In 2016, they had 559 volunteers who worked just under 20,000 hours to help this community um, in Malvern. At this gathering, the Prime Minister was able to speak to caregivers of how, how the proposed changes will improve, expand and simplify the current caregiver tax credit system by replacing the existing credit programs with the new Canada Caregiver Credit. Budget 2017 will replace the current caregiver credit, infirm dependent credit and family caregiver tax credit with one single new credit. The new Canada Caregiver Credit will provide support for those who need it the most and help more families who give care to their loved ones. The new credit will provide $6,883 for the care of dependent relatives with disabilities and $2,150 for the care of a spouse, common law partner or a minor child. It will provide an additional $310 million in tax relief over the next five years to Canadians. It will be indexed to inflation and it will be subject to no reduction until the dependent family member is making more than $16,163. En plus de crédit canadien pour... In addition to the new Canada Caregiver Credit in Budget 2017, our government announced that we will expand employment insurance benefits for individuals who need to take care of a gravely ill family member or child. 2017 will provide an additional $691.3 million over five years to create a new EI caregiver benefit of up to 15 weeks. Parents of critically ill children will continue to be able to access up to 35 weeks of coverage with more flexibility to share the benefit among multiple family members. These changes will help thousands of families across the country 
take care of one another and make the day-to-day -day lives of many in my riding a little bit easier. Take a moment to thank all the caregivers in my community and those around the country who look after their loved ones. Governments, as you know, cannot take care of people as well as those close to us. But governments can and must support those caregivers. This budget is a great start. Innovation is very important to our government, Mr. Speaker. We have many innovators in my riding of Scarborough Rouge Park. We have great examples of businesses that focus on innovation. The University of Toronto Scarborough campus, we have a program called The Hub, which acts as an incubator of new ideas and businesses. In fact, when I met with the Parks Canada official last week, she confirmed to me that the hub is working towards developing an app to navigate the Rouge National Urban Park, which is also in my writing. We have many more innovators who continue to build an innovation-based economy. For example, last year's Google Demo Days award winner, Knowledge Hook, is from Scarborough Rouge Park. This company, started by Travis Rutnam and his team, continues to, to grow and will be the, 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 the companies of the future will contribute to the economy of the future. It is in this context that I'm very excited that Budget 2017 will serve as a foundation of our future growth. It is focused on one thing, that's to help people succeed. This budget is a visionary step towards building the economy of the future. And here are some elements. It proposes to invest an additional $1.8 billion over six years into labor market development agreements with the provinces. For the average Canadian, this means more opportunities to upgrade their skills, receive career counselling, start their own business, and gain experience. But our commitment goes well beyond by expanding eligibility to an additional 10,000 part-time students for Canada student grants and loans each year. And, and, it, and it expands eligibility even higher to students who support their families. We're launching a pilot project to test new approaches for adult learners to return to school at a cost of $287.2 million over the next three years. We're making changes to EI to help those going back to school, investing in skills, development, creating more jobs for youth, and increasing the availability of co-op placements for students. In this budget, we propose this new strategic innovation fund to make high-quality investments in businesses that will bring jobs to Canada. We are creating a new $400 million venture capital fund through the Business Development Bank of Canada to help Canadian businesses get a leg up and add value to our economy. And we're investing in the next generation of entrepreneurs by partnering with great organizations like Futurepreneurs. Let me just turn to social housing, Mr. Speaker. Good housing is a fun fundamental need for the development of an individual. It is the center of one's life. The member for Scarborough Agent Court and I met with the CEO of the Toronto Community Housing on March 28th. We had a tour of six Toronto Community Housing complexes in Scarborough. We were able to see firsthand the need to invest in housing. These complexes located in my riding and in Scarborough Agent Court help thousands of families makes, make ends meet. They provide affordable living and support those most vulnerable in our society. Budget 2017 makes a historic investment of $11.2 billion over 11 years to build, renew, and repair Canada's affordable housing and to ensure that all Canadians have their housing needs met. This includes $5 billion that will go toward our new National Housing Fund to address housing issues in our cities, including co-op housing. As you know, I, I have 12 co-op um, co housing complexes in my riding and an additional $2.1 billion over the next 11 years will go towards homelessness prevention strategy, working with communities across the country to combat homelessness and provide support to mitigate underlying issues that lead to homelessness. Mr. Speaker, I'm very proud of this budget. Budget 2017 gives answers to many of the difficult questions facing our society today. It invests to support Canadians in it to adopt to a modern economy and looks forward by investing in education, training, and businesses. It supports caregivers. Mr. Speaker, this is a forward-looking budget, and I think we can all get behind, and I'm proud to support it. Thank you. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Essex.